Wichita's KFA. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. Mark Twain once said that everybody talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. An ever-increasing army of people feel that way about pollution, but happily are doing something about it. Trying, anyway. But trying, mark you, against great odds. Odds which can be lumped under the one descriptive word, apathy. Apathy. Perhaps the most destructive negative force mankind has ever known. A force which could easily have led to the strange tale I bring you now. Dells, I order you. Put Magda out of the house instantly. She's my wife, Mr. Manderson. You can't ask you me to... You fool! She's caught the Red Death. Brought it into my house, my sanctuary. Look at her. Beads of sweat on her face. Blood red sweat. She's caught the plague. Plague or not, I am not putting her out to die. Then I am. And one move from you to stop me and you'll go out with her. I mean what I say, Nils. Every word of it. Our mystery drama, The Mask of the Red Death, was especially adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe classic by George Lothar and stars Carl Swenson and Stats Cotsworth. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The Mask of the Red Death. The word mask, you should know, is spelled M-A-S-Q-U-E and means masquerade. And to begin this particular masquerade, I'm going to ask you to join me in a huge house, a mansion, on top of Lookout Mountain. We're in a vast living room, one wall of which is made of plate glass, through which... In whatever direction the house turns, yes, you can turn the house by pressing buttons, can be seen miles on miles of country far below. There are others in the living room with us, including the multimillionaire owner of this luxurious estate. That tall, expensively dressed, gray-haired man over there, Milo Manderson. So just shut up, Jack. Once and for all, shut up. Milo, all I'm saying is... And I'm sick of hearing you say it. Flossie's sick of it. Doreen's sick of it. We're all sick of it. So shut up. Okay, okay. Oh, just let me point out one more thing. please. Can't you see how upset you're making my father? You're talking as if... Well, as if he were doing something perfectly awful. When all he's doing is saving us from the Red Death. You ought to have a little more gratitude, Jack. Don't you understand? Any of you understand? Look out that window into the valley where the village is. The farmlands, dead animals in the fields, cows, horses, pigs, chickens, everything. Doreen, shut him up. Shut him up or I won't care if he is your husband. Which is the only reason I brought him along. I'll throw him out. I'll make up your mind, Milo. You didn't bring me here. You forced me here. For Doreen's sake, not yours. You penniless hayseed, you farmer. Huh. Would you believe it? 1996... Here we are in the year 1996, and he's still farming like it was 20 years or 30 years ago. Not 20 years ago, Milo. Not 30, 100. I'm trying to bring the land back to what it was, trying to replenish the earth, to restore what fools like you took out of it with every pollutant you can think of. I'm trying to say... No, I've had it. I'm warning you for the last time. Doreen, talk to this fathead you married. Talk some sense into him. Milo, give Flossie a little drinky. A little martini. I could do with one myself. Now, you talk to him, Doreen. Jack, 
My father's right. Uh, with you, he's always right. Now, listen to me, honey. There's a plague out there, and it's spreading. It's spreading all over the country, and people are dying by the thousands, and all father's trying to do is save us from it. I can't. Yeah, he can. He can. Father has never failed, never, at anything he made up his mind to do. He spent weeks stocking this place with food and water, everything we'll need to stick things out until the plague's over. All those people dying out there, and we should... Well, why shouldn't we? They'd do the same if they could. Who wants to find themselves sweating blood all of a sudden and dying in hours? Not me. I'm sorry for them, Jack. I really am. But that's no reason for me or you to go out there and die with them. There's such a thing as conscience, Doreen. Oh, Jack, you're impossible. What's that noise, Father? The helicopter. Yeah. Yeah, let me turn the house. You'll be able to see it coming in from the east. There. There she comes. the helicopter, Milo? Bringing in a couple I hired to do the cooking and housework. The Ostroms, Nils and his wife, Magda. I hired them through a New York agency and had my pilot fly them out. What about the plague? Father, they could be bringing it with them. I had them checked out. Complete physical. And every precaution taken to keep them from any contact with people till they got to the chopper. Nothing to worry about. Oh, look at that gorgeous hunk of man getting out of the cup. That's Nils. Ooh, six foot four if he's an inch. Long blonde hair. Oh, wow. <laughs> you keep your eyes on me, baby. I'm the guy you're going to marry, remember, not him. How could I forget? You're the guy with all the money. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, here they come. Now, as soon as they get in the house, we lock the place up solid, and I mean solid. Nobody gets in or out till this plague is over. You're Nils Ostrom, is that right? Yes, Mr. Manderson. And this is Magda, your wife. Yes, sir. I should tell you she cannot hear or speak. She is a deaf mute. A deaf mute? Well, how in Hades are we going to talk to her then? Give orders. Uh, she can read your lips. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah? What? Uh, the pilot of the helicopter, he asked me to ask you, will you let him stay? No way. He is standing out there, sir, waiting for one sign or another from you to motion him to come inside or wave him away. Well, he's going to get waved away. Wait a minute, Milo. What now, farmer boy? I'm going with him. Now, Jack, we've been through all this I'm before. sorry, Doreen. I love you. You know that. But I just can't save my own skin while others are dying. Not, not if I can do something to help. Milo, you forced me to come here. And I'm forcing you to stay. Father! Well, that'd defeat your own purpose, wouldn't it? To shoot me, Milo? No. No intention of killing you, Jack. Just a bullet through the leg to stop you. And I'll do it. I'm going to protect you from the plague whether you want it or not. Not for your sake, but for Doreen's. She loves you. You don't ask me why, but she does. And that's the only reason I'm keeping you here. Nils, you and your wife start locking the place up. Yes, sir. Come, Magda. I'll wave that pilot off. You could have let him stay, Milo. You may be sending him to his death. And if it weren't for Doreen, you'd be going along with him. Now shut up. And help get this place locked up. Oh. Well, here you are, Jack. Yeah. Milo sent me to find you. Everybody's at the dinner table but you. Just leave me alone, Floss, huh? Sure. Only, where does it get you? Sitting in the dark, brooding. Look down in the valley. Where the village is. Okay, Jack. I'm looking. What do you see? Not much. I mean, it's nighttime. There used to be a lot of lights down there. Like, you know, people in their houses doing whatever people do in their houses. But in the week we've been here... Hey, has it been a week? Yeah, a week. Well, anyway, since we've been here, at least half the lights have gone out. They didn't go out. They burned out. People died of the Red Death, and the lights just burned out. Tough? Is that all you can say? Tough? Do you realize what's happening out there? Not only down there in the village, but all over the United States, Canada, the, the world. 
there's something you've got to understand about little Flossie. Oh. Up here in the head, nothing. Down here, and here, <laughs> plenty. But up here in the head, oh, forget it. And that's why when this is all over, Milo's going to make me wife number four. Only you know something? Know what? Well, I've been listening. All this week, I've been listening to you. And it kind of gets through to me that, well, maybe you've got something. Tell me about what you're all wrapped up in. This orgasmic farming thing. Organic. You, you wouldn't be interested. <laughs> well, so why am I asking? Well, it, 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 it's simple. It, it, it's like a bank account. Well, that I know about. All right. So then, you know, if you take out more than you put in... No bank account. Overdrawn. Finny. Exactly. Hmm. So, well, it, it's simple. The, the land, the earth, where all the world's food comes from, it, it's a bank account. Now, unless you want to be overdrawn, you've got to put back in what you take out. Well, the world has been taking out and never putting back in. The, the land is bankrupt. It, it's overdrawn. It, it's poor, not rich anymore. So what comes out of it is poor, not rich. So no matter how much people eat, what they eat is practically worthless. Oh, yeah. You follow me, then? Mm. Like a tiger. If what we eat is worthless, well, then we get sick. We get sick. The air gets sick. The waters get sick. And then we get what we've got now, the, the plague of the Red Death. Oh. So him, um, Milo, what he's doing... Trying to save us from the Red Death. Well, what good is it? I mean, if the plague stops like he says it will... It will, it will, but there'll be others worse. They're God's way of saying... Man, you're overdrawn. Lost. Uh-oh. Lost. Milo's looking for me. I'm supposed to find you and... Uh, uh, right here, lover, right here. Now, what is this? You and the farmer boy in the dark. Talking, doll, just talking. I sent you to look for him, get him to the dinner table, and you sit here in the dark just talking. Well, i got to talk to somebody, and you're never in the mood. Not for that. Well, what's so interesting in him? Well, he was telling me about organic farming and how it could save the earth from going bankrupt. No, not that again. Come on, dinner's getting cold. You heard me, Jack. No, I'll stay here, Milo. Oh, come on, Jack. You you ought to eat. You know, keep up your strength. On that food? It's practically worthless. Well, just to keep me company, then. We can talk some more, and... I like talking to you. Yeah, that's about all farmer boy can do, talk. Anybody can talk. I act. You just remember one thing, Flossie girl. I'm the one that's saving you from the Red Death. Yeah. Only answer me a question, Milo. Sure. Saving me. For what? More souffle, Mr. Munderson. No. And I'll tell you something, Nils. Your wife's cooking hasn't been so hot in the past few days. She better get on the ball. I am sorry, sir, but she has not been feeling herself. I'll have more, Niels. I think it's quite good. Yes, madam. Yeah, and what about the coffee? I asked for another cup. Yeah, in a moment, sir. My wife is heating it. Anyone see the news on Global Vision today? Oh, I did, Dorian. Why? They said a plague is spreading, but it's shown up now in France, Italy, Spain, everywhere. Nothing surprising about that. I didn't say it was. I just said it was on the news. No need to take my head off, Doreen. No need for you to be sarcastic. I wasn't being. Oh, don't tell me. Look, all I said it was... what you say. It's your attitude. I notice you don't take that tone with her. Me? How'd I get into this? You know how you got into it. Don't pull the innocent on me. If you're implying... Oh, skip it, Nils. Where is that coffee? Uh, here's my wife with it now, madame. Magna? Let me help you with the tray. I don't intend to skip anything. If you're implying that I've been up to anything... Look, I... you little... Now stop it, the two of you. The last two or three days you've been eating each other like a couple of alley cats, and I'm sick of it. Well, you just tell your girlfriend... You watch that... your tongue. Flossie isn't my girlfriend, she's my fiance. What's more? What the devil? Sorry, sir, I'm very sorry. My wife, the... 
The tray slipped from her hat. Magda! Look out, she's collapsing! Magda! Oh, my dearest. Let me give you a hand with her, Nils. No, sir, stand back. But, Nils... No, you... get back, sir, get back. Don't, don't come near her. Can't you see? See what? <laughs> her face. She's <laughs> sweating blood. Yes, I'm afraid she has the red plague. It's worse than that. She's brought it here. <laughs> In spite of all precautions, the Red Death invades Milo Manderson's sanctuary, his barricaded retreat atop Lookout Mountain. And, uh, you ask me, another disease has invaded the mansion. Jealousy. Doreen's and Milo's resentment of what appears to be a developing friendship between Floss and Jack. I'll be back shortly. we are told in the Bible, so shall ye reap. It would appear that multimillionaire Milo Manderson is on the threshold of doing some reaping. He thought himself and his few chosen companions safe from the plague of the Red Death, secure in his isolated retreat atop Lookout Mountain, the world and the spreading death in it barred from his door. Not so. Magda Ostrom... Wife of Nils, the couple Manderson brought to do the menial work of the household, has just collapsed. Get her out. What? Get her out. Out of this room, out of this house. Oh, now cool it, Milo. The woman's dying. And we're not dying with her. Ah! Father! Don't start breaking The things. money I spent to protect us, the precautions I took, weeks of thought and preparation to doctors. How many doctors did I send them to to examine them and check them out, make sure... That they were free with a Oh, fight. Father, get hold of your... Uh, now she comes down with it. In my own house. This sanctuary, I nearly killed myself to make ready so we'd all be safe. Get her out of here. You can't ask me, Get to... her out! I will not. No, Mr. Manderson, I will not. Magda is going to die, but she is not going to die alone. Then die with her. Milo, no, no. Get out of my way. Give me that gun. Father! Here. Stop it. All of you, stop oh, it. Oh, now, you're giving orders. You. Shut up and listen. Uh, my wife uh, is trying to say something in sign language. You, yeah, Magda. What? No. How about my darling? You... Very well. What What did she say, Nils? She said there is no hope for her. And there is no sense in two of us dying. What's she doing? Where's she going? Out of the house. To die alone. <laughs> Goodbye. My dearest. Goodbye. I'll see you dead for this, Manderson. Mr. Madison. And I'm not scared by threats. No threat, Mr. Manderson. A promise. Business has been brought to a virtual standstill throughout the world. Here in the United States, countless thousands who tried and are still trying to leave the congestion of the cities for what is considered the relative safety of rural areas... Shut that thing off. ...are blocked off. by military and local police. I said police. shut that thing off. There are riots in the... Oh, oh, I, 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 uh, oh look. Uh, His face. Uh, the red death. I got... He's got it. Uh, His face. Uh, uh, red. red. And red. gentlemen, I... All right, uh, I'll shut it off. The sight of death becoming too much for you, Mr. Munderson? Oh. Shut up. I'm sorry, sir. I thought perhaps the sight of my wife's body lying out in the patio where she collapsed and died. Neil, you'll go too far, I warn you. I'd shoot you now if we didn't need you. Need me? For what? Are you all so incompetent, so helpless you can't do for yourself? The ladies can cook. Me? I can't boil water. And I don't intend to. That's what you are paid for. 
You are so like your father, madame. You think everything can be bought, even life. Now, you look here. Since your wife died two days ago, you've been acting like... Well, like anything but the servant you are. Now, you just cut it out. You just remember your place. Remember who and what you are. Do you understand me, Niv? Totally, madame. Is there anything madame wishes before I go to make up the beds? Not at the moment, but when there is, I'll let you know. Thank you, madam. Hmm. Now, that's the way to handle a servant. Nice going, Doreen. I'm proud to call you daughter. Well, I'm not proud to call a wife. The man isn't himself. He's broken with grief. He loved his wife. He saw her go to her death alone. He watched through this window as she collapsed out there on the patio and died before his eyes. And you treat him as if he were nothing, the way you treat me, treat Floss. I thought you'd become Flossie's champion, and now I know. All I'm saying is it's you can't... too much, as usual. You've got a big mouth and a head stuffed with hay. The trouble is here, we're bored. That's the one thing I didn't think of, that we'd get bored. We've been cooped up here for nearly two weeks now. Nine days. Will you please shut up? Well, nine days isn't two weeks is all I'm saying. I can take care of that. How, Father? Well, I don't know yet. I'll think of something. Meantime, how about some bridge? Not me. Sorry, Marlo. Get a bridge. Well, then how about... Uh... Ah, blazes with it. I'm going up to the solarium to get some sun. I'll go with you, Father. Jack? I'll stay here. With Flossie, of course. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have the orgy I've been planning for weeks. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, join me in an orgy, Floss? Uh-uh. But you know something. What? I have joined you. What do you mean? Well, me, I'm no great brain, but... Well, I'd have to be a dope not to... Well, anyhow, begin to realize that you're right. Milo and Doreen, well, they're wrong. Oh? Mm-hmm. If you mean it, what you keep saying all the time, that is. You mean... Well, like the world's gone to hell. It's become a cesspool, you called it. Yeah, a cesspool of corruption. But it can be cured, brought back to what it was once. Pure and clean and beautiful and healthy. You mean it when you say you want to get out of here and go out there into the world, right right into the middle of the plague, whether it kills you or not, so that you can do all you can to help people build a brand new world? Yeah. Yeah, I mean all that. But I can't get out. Milo's got the keys to every door. The windows are unbreakable. I could get the keys. Easy. You do that? You, you're with me, not him? I never was with him. It was a deal, kind of, you know. Yeah. So what do you say? Well? That means leaving Doreen. Oh. You still got a thing for her, huh? I never lost it. Oh. <laughs> well, you got decisions to make. Leave Doreen and do what you believe is right. But don't leave Doreen. And don't do it. A decision I don't think you need make, Mr. Reynolds. Not yet. Nels. I apologize. I overheard something of what you've been saying. Whatever your decision, it would be foolish for you to go out into the world right now, sir. You think so, Nils? I know it, sir. The plague is reaching its height. In a few days, it will begin to break and then recede. But right now, and for the next few days, it will be at its most dangerous point. But, but Believe what... Believe me, sir. Leave here now and your death will be assured. And you are among a handful the world cannot afford to lose. Not at this time. Nils, you're something else. You know that? Sometimes you talk like... Like, you know, all there is to know. It'll be fun, Doreen. A barrel of fun. Costumes. What about costumes? 
Jim. That's all taken care of. Hey, now, Floss, Jack, yeah, you, Nils. I got a great idea. You say you're bored. You say life in the Milo Madison hideaway holds no variety for you, no spice at all for you. Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a party. A, a party? Mm, not just a party, Jack, the boy, a masquerade party. Are you crazy? What do you mean, crazy? Party? A masquerade party? When out there, the world is dying? Milo, it's... It's obscene. Uh, you see, Doreen, I told you. Beat my brains out thinking of something to liven things up to keep us from going nuts with boredom. Where do I get? Well, you don't go along with this, Doreen. You, you don't. Well, I... I didn't at first. But then he changed your mind. What if he did? At least he's doing something. All you do is talk. That's all I can do. Locked in here, a prisoner. What more can I do? Something. I don't know, but something. Don't just talk. Do. All right, I'll do. Milo, you take your masquerade party and stuff it. I've decided we're going to have a masquerade party. And that's what we're going to have tonight. And you're going to be in it, you and Flossie. Floss, you go along with this? No. Now look, you little... Tramp? Is that what you're going to say, Milo? Don't put words in my mouth. Don't you put thoughts in my head. Floss, I wouldn't rather think. Look through that window. There's death out there. All around out there. A masquerade party. How could you think of it? How awful could you be to even think of it? We are going to have a masquerade party. And we're going to have it tonight. If it's the last thing I do. It will be. What? It will be the last thing you do. Now, what do you mean by that? I mean I understand why you decided to have a masquerade party. Two days ago, when I held my dying wife in my arms, I told you what I thought of you. And no servant, no lackey, ever told Milo Manderson the truth since the day Milo Manderson realized he had made his first million. Before that day, you, Milo Manderson, you, still retained some shreds of humanity. But on that day, and ever since, oh, God, God, I call on you. What has this mortal become? I, he's crazy. Look at him, arms outspread, looking up at the ceiling, calling on God like he knew him. He, he's out of his head. Hear me now, Milo. Miss Milo! Hear me. It's a revenge you're after. I told you the truth. The truth of not what you are, but what you have become. God made you beautiful. You have made yourself ugly. You must learn you are wrong. And in learning, come back to God. Come back to truth. You want revenge on me? You shall have it. And you shall learn the emptiness and the hollowness of it. Revenge is mine, says the Lord. Not yours. Mine. And this, my Lomanderson, you are about to learn. And may God... In his infinite mercy, help you bear the agony of the learning. A strange speech, surely. Nils calls on God as if, uh, well, as if he knew him as intimately as I know you. And we do know each other, you and I, very well indeed by this time, don't we? ought to. Been together a long time. Pleasant time for me, anyhow. Hope for you, too. Back shortly with Act Three. Death in the form of a plague known as the Red Death lays waste the world, while in an isolated mansion atop Lookout Mountain, multi-millionaire Milo Manderson, seeking refuge, 
barricades himself and his companions from it. Now, vengeful or callous or both, he proposes to hold a masquerade party to relieve the boredom of their voluntary imprisonment. We rejoin the small beleaguered group in the vast living room of the mansion as... <laughs> he's, he's gone crazy. You have, Nils. You know that. You've gone crazy. No. Not I. You. A long time ago. You don't see me acting like I was God. Don't I? I think Nils is right. In a way, Milo, you've come to think you're more than God, really. Well, now you are going too far, Jack. No, no, no. You... Wait, wait a minute, Doreen. Wait just one minute. Let this hayseed husband of yours go on. So, God sent the red plague to wipe us all out. That is, eh? Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't have to. From where I sit, you created it yourselves. You're as crazy as Nils. Wait and see, Milo. <laughs> just wait and see. Yeah. And while I'm waiting, we'll have our party. Yes, there's a big closet in the game room, and it's loaded with costumes. From the bash we had up here a couple of years ago, Doreen, you remember? Yes. yes. <laughs> so you can all get your costumes from there. Uh, Nils, you break out the Paul Rocher. I've been saving that champagne for a special occasion. And if you ask me, this is going to be a real special occasion. It will indeed be that, Mr. Manderson. The most special occasion of your life. <laughs> Yes, Doreen. Hook me up in back. This Marie Antoinette costume is hard to manage. Oh, okay. Hey, you uh, look handsome. That black and white domino. What kind of mask? Black or white? Um, black. Oh, romantic as well as handsome. And sulky. Sullen. Worried is the word, Doreen. Very, very worried. Oh, now don't tell me that, that, that little act Nils put on, that performance of stretching his arms wide and crying out to God. <laughs> Don't tell me it got to you. The way it got to you? To me. I thought it as, as laughably ridiculous as my father did. Your father did? It's only trying to save us from the Red Death, Jack. And it's about time you gave him some credit for it instead of insulting him every chance you get. I'm not insulting him. I'm trying to wake him up. I don't know why it is, no matter how I try to keep things pleasant between us, you always manage to start your eternal harping on pollution. I'm sorry, Doreen. Oh, you're always sorry. But that doesn't help. You ruin everything, just as you're trying to ruin my fun. Fun? How can you talk about fun? Because when... I need fun. That's why. Because my father's right. We're going house crazy with boredom. And I don't see how a few hours of fun will change anything in that world you worry so much about, one way or the other. The music is starting. Oh, let's go down. Jack, please, please, for once, let's enjoy ourselves. Ah, come on, Floss, come on. The way you're dancing, put some life into it, baby. I don't feel like dancing. Well, you will. All you need is a couple more glasses of champagne. Soon take care of that. Now, say one thing for Nils. He may be batty as a bed bug, but he's a good servant. His Paul Roger is perfectly chilled. Okay, honey. Another glass for you. And another for me. Bottoms up. I can't. <laughs> How can you... Don't cry, Flop. Don't cry. I can't help it. How can I try to be happy with all that's out there beyond that window? Be happy? Uh, you want to know the truth? I'll tell you. The truth keeps crowding in on me, pressuring me, trying to suffocate me. But I push it away. Because if I didn't, it would suffocate me. Flossie, the truth is, way deep inside me somewhere, I'm scared. Scared? You? Doreen. Jack. Well, welcome to the party. Oh, look at you, sweetheart. Dolled up like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> Careful you don't lose your head tonight. <laughs> 
And Jack, hey, you look terrific in that black and white. What's it called? Uh, uh, domino. Yeah, that's it. That's what it looks like. No, oh, and say, you want to see something really terrific? Take a gander at Flossie, a fairy queen. You look lovely, Floss. But white. My dear, you, in white. No, 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 hey, come now, none of that. Not tonight. Tonight, even if it is just for tonight, we're going to stop sniping at each other. Uh, hold it. Wait a minute, we need Nils. He's a guest, too. <laughs> He's a kind of a serving guest, but still a guest. Nils? Hey, Nils. Oh, the party's starting. Come on, join in. Coming. Coming. And hurry up. We all want to see what costume you're wearing. This one, Mr. Manderson. <gasps> oh. Who do you think you are? Who the devil do you think you are? I beg pardon, sir? Your costume is blood red. Suit, shirt, cape, the mask covering your face. All blood red. The Red Death Mills? Yes, sir. The Red Death. Wait, wait a minute. What are you up to? Simply turning off the music. So that's it, is it? You intend to ruin my little party, do you? You come dressed as a Red Death to throw a wet blanket over the fun we're going to have. Well, I'll take care of that right here and now. I'm ripping that costume off you, ripping all of it off. Beginning with a mask. There. Oh. 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 I oh my God. am not costumed as the Red Death, Milo Manderson. I am the Red Death. A skull. A blood red skull. No, no face. A skull. Blood red. You are. You are the Red Death. God help me. God will not help you now, Milo Manderson. There comes a time when mortals must help themselves, and your time has come. What? Well, what do you want of me? You may make a choice. A choice I will give you. You may make the choice for good or ill. Name it. I'll choose what's right, what's good. I, I swear it to you. You can choose to live... Yes, yes. ...or die. What do you mean, Nils? I... I'm... I'm sorry, that's not your name, of course. Oh, it will do. What do you mean? To live or die? One of you, you or your father, must die. And the choice I leave to him. Are you saying that Milo must choose either to give up his own life and save Doreen's or... or refuse and, and, and let her die? I am. Oh, wow. I mean, like, Wow. N Nils, what about Floss? What about me? You have no part in this. When I am gone, as I soon shall be, when I no longer plague the world, you and others like you will be needed to restore it, replenish it. Me? Him I can understand, but, but me? I'm nobody. I'm nothing. And that makes you something. Milo Manderson, what is your choice? Haven't I anything to say about all this? Haven't I some choice in whether I live or die? None. But that's not fair. If he... If my father chooses to let me die to save himself... But he hasn't. Not yet. Choose, Milo Manderson. Choose. Father. I... 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 Can't die. I can't, I can't face death. It's too horrible. The thought is too horrible. Horrible. Your daughter, your daughter dies then. Yes. What? What was that? He can't make a choice, don't you see? He hasn't the courage to choose death for himself or for me. Scared. He said it himself. Deep down inside, scared. And I never knew in all these years. Never knew. I thought he was the strongest man on earth, but he's just a scared child. Nils, take me. He must make the choice. Choose. 
shoes. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Take her. Take Doreen. She she offered, didn't she? she? She's not afraid. But I am. Look at me. Look, I'm sweating with fear. Look again. Uh, You're not sweating with fear, but with death. Red. Red. Remember, I sweat. Blood. Red. I, 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 I... Stricken, I, Milo Manderson. Stricken with the red death. But Why? Oh, why? You gave me a choice. And again, you chose the wrong one. You chose to do evil instead of good, as you always have. Always. Now die. No! Die. And may your soul go to the hell it deserves. No! 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 He threw himself through the window. Lying out there next to my dog. Oh, oh, mother. Easy, darling. Easy, easy. Take it easy, sweetheart. Nels. Nels, I think. Where is he? He was. He was there a second ago. But now. Just a costume laying in a pile on the floor. He's gone. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope he's gone forever. Not only from here, but from the world out there. What world? What's left of it? There are still some lights burning in the village. And everywhere else, I guess. Those that are left. Maybe God made a choice. And maybe we're part of it. Whether we are or not, the only choice we've got is to go out there and start helping... Start rebuilding, start creating another. <laughs> and with God's help, a better world. So ended the mask, the masquerade, if you will, of the Red Death. The year 1996 isn't too far off as years go. And as we know, there are men and women in the world today with the foresight to see what lies ahead if the pollution of our air and our water and the very earth itself isn't brought to an end. I'll be back shortly. tale I've just brought you was an allegory, a story designed to symbolize a message, a truth. Of course, it never happened, but it could. Our cast included Scott Scottsworth, Carl Swenson, Lois Smith, Jack Grimes, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Uh, Shh, listen. No, no, no. What's that? What's he saying? He's, he's crying. Crying as if his, as if his heart would break. Oh, kill me. This, oh, this, please. Oh, this please. is terrible. Poor wife. He's in agony, everybody. Yes, yes, I can hear him. Poor man. Will, what is he crying over? It can't be the painting. Even if it had been damaged when those sailors bumped the box, Elvira, it, it can't be that. It isn't. Isn't? I told you, I've had this feeling all along. This sense of something. You know. And now I'm sure. It isn't a painting that's in that box, Will. It's a corpse. A corpse? And the question that I've been asking myself all along is... Who's... Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... <laughs>